The news is not good on Jamison Williams. Let's discuss. You are Locked On Lions, your daily Detroit Lions podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Let's do this, everybody, on a Thursday, August 17th, and a Friday, August 18th. Matt Derry with you. It's Locked On Lions right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, indeed, every day. Shout out to our everydayers who check us out wherever you get your podcast. Turner Batdorf is out there. We love Turner. Hit me up on Twitter today. Mike Vanderpool, my guy, the Harbor Springs Insider, JW. He knows who he is. Thanks to all of you for making us your, your first listen and checking us out wherever you get your podcast. And again, please subscribe to our Locked On Lions YouTube channel. We're getting close, closer to 7,000 subscribers. Please watch for free and subscribe on YouTube. Coming up on the show today, we got injury news on the receivers. Amon Ross St. Brown, an update on Dan Campbell telling us about Jamison Williams. News is not good. Could there be a free agent wide receiver option to take JMO's spot for a little while? We will discuss coming up momentarily here on Locked On Lions. Also, some backup Quarterback rankings I want to discuss. Joint practice day two in the books against the Jags today. Defense did better. A couple of guys stepped up. We will talk about that today. Also on Lockdown Lions, right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. Follow me on Twitter at Dairy Speaks at Lockdown Lions. Also, uh, we are on Threads at the Real Matt Dairy. If you're on Threads, I don't know if anybody's on Threads. Uh, my wife is, uh, and also. Uh, the Matt Derry Facebook fan page. Look, I don't want to spend, and I know you guys don't want me to spend um, the entire show and hours upon hours today talking about Jamison Williams. Um, <laughs> I'm tired of talking about him. The good news about Jamison Williams' hamstring injury that's going to keep him out for the rest of the preseason is that we don't have to sit here every day and dissect, right? And dissect. Jamison Williams dropping a ball in practice. Jamison Williams having trouble. Jamison Williams this. Jamison Williams that. You're not going to hear his name now for, what, 12 weeks, 10 weeks? He's going to miss the first six weeks. He's going to miss the next three weeks. And quite honestly, do you really think when the Lions play in week seven and his suspension's over that they're going to play him? It took him forever to get ready last year, and then he didn't get on the field much. So... It's disappointing. The hamstring injury, according to Dan Campbell, likely going to keep him out the rest of the preseason. That means he's going to have to rehab and work out and get healthy and not be a part of today, which was a huge day. Would have been huge for him to be out there against the uh, the Jags and join practices. He won't play Saturday. He's not going to play next, what is it, Friday against Carolina. And then he's suspended and won't be able to be back at least with his teammates, until week four. And of course, uh, at practice, and then not until week seven in the regular season. But what has been a complete roller coaster ride and a disappointing one at that for the Lions' second first-round pick last year continues. Now, Jamison Williams got injured. He pulled up lame with a hamstring problem yesterday in practice and had to go right to the locker room. It's not his fault. Injuries are a part of the game. but. It's a disappointing end to August for him. We all said going into the preseason, want to get him reps, want to see him out there. He needs to play. Dan Campbell talked about he's coming he's back to square one. We're working with him. We got, got to see some positive stuff. And there were some good moments and bad moments the last few weeks at training camp. But now with this hamstring problem, he will not be back and you won't see him until week seven. And again, When week seven arrives, I'm not sure we're even going to see him because other guys are ahead of him. Josh Reynolds, Khalif Raymond, Denzel Mims, Amon Ross St. Brown. The list goes on and on. So it's disappointing. Now, speaking of St. Brown, Dan Campbell said this morning that his ankle injury is not as serious as Williams' hamstring problem. Amon Ra could be back next week for some practices and uh, may even jog out there or two against Carolina. You're not going to see any starters again or any of the main players this weekend against Jacksonville. 
Campbell was on uh, this morning on the 97 one, the ticket morning show with Stoney and Jansen and uh, uh, did say, look, I don't think our starters are going to play. We're going to get out of what we get out of these two joint practices. When the guys are getting 40 reps or more, it's physical. They don't need to play in the game. So again, just like last Friday against the giants, you'll see a lot of second, third and fourth teamers and guys that are trying to make the roster play in the preseason game at one o'clock uh, Saturday against Jacksonville. Good news is for those of you that are watching in other markets, you'll be able to watch the game live on the NFL network as they will uh, pick up the, uh, I believe they'll pick up the lion's feed with Jason Ross and uh, Devin Gardner and our buddy, Danny Rogers uh, Saturday at one o'clock. So that's the story from Allen park as far as injuries and getting ready for Saturday's game. Um, I do have a list of some free agent wide receivers. Look, Right now, the Lions have some guys fighting for spots. Chase Coda, Dylan Drummond, um, you know, Antoine Green. The wide receiver room is looking a little thin right now. Denzel Mims has been hurt. We know Jameer Gibbs at times is in that wide receiver room in some of the meetings. You're going to see him out wide. But what if the Lions decided we need, with J-Mo injured and J-Mo out, we need another wide receiver? Who could the Lions go out and get? Uh, Tampa Bay's doing the same thing right now because Justin Gage got hurt the other day and he's out for the year. I'm going to throw some names at you. All right. And you tell me what you think of this. Uh, T.Y. Hilton is available. All right. T.Y. Hilton is available. Former uh, Indianapolis Colt. Jarvis Landry. Juice Landry. Jarvis Landry is a good football player. 30 years old. I wouldn't mind that at all uh, from the formerly of the Browns and Saints. Um, Robert Woods is out there. Former Ram. Julio Jones. How old? Julio Jones is like my age. He's like 50, isn't he? But Julio Jones is available. I wish you could have Julio Jones from uh, 10 years ago. The former Lion. Are you ready for this one? The former Lion, Kenny Galladay, is available. Memo to Brad Holmes, do not pick up the phone and call number 19. Do not. Kenny Galladay left the Lions, and Brad Holmes actually already nixed Kenny Galladay. He didn't want to re-sign him. Kenny Galladay in New York last year with the Giants was a train wreck. Bring him home. No, no, we're not bringing him home. And finally, for those of you that were a fan, all seven listeners that I had at Detroit Sports 105.1 back in the day, the executive producer, Nathan Litke, he knows. Uh, but the man, the myth, the legend, Tufts, trade up, T-U-F-S-S, Tufts, trade up for Super Sammy, Sammy Watkins, is, is a free agent right now. Those are your options. <laughs> I'd probably say Jarvis Landry would be my first choice if the Lions were going to go out and find a receiver. Now, some other receivers will get cut. Maybe the Lions make a trade. But you wanted a list of receivers that are available now that J-Mo's hurt and some other guys have been down and Mims hasn't practiced all week. There you go. If I would pick one. I would pick probably Jarvis Landry. Really good teammate. Hey, he can throw a heck of a uh, reverse pass, Jarvis Landry. So there you go. Those are some names to think about when it's uh, free agents that are available for the Lions if they're going to go out and try to find another wide receiver. All right, coming up next, uh, some studs from today, some stars of a joint practice. We will get into that. Also, I got a little cool list from our friends at Bet Michigan about uh, backup quarterbacks, and it uh, speaks highly of one Teddy Bridgewater. We will do that uh, coming up next. But first, we got to tell you about our new friends. At Nutrafol, you don't have to choose uh, between better hair growth and your health. Nutrafol provides a whole body health approach for men that promotes healthier hair. No drugs, no compromises, just better hair. Men think losing your, their hair is like inevitable. Well, take control of your hair's future with Nutrafol's science-backed hair growth supplement for men. Nutrafol, N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve your hair growth, visible thickness, and visible scalp coverage. We 
Dr. Trapole's hair growth supplements use physician-formulated, natural, science-backed ingredients. They're drug-free. Patented technology provides consistent, reliable results without compromising your sexual health. We do not want that. And it works. In a clinical study, 84% of men showed improvement in their hair after six months taking Nutrafol men's hair growth supplements. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our Locked On Lions listeners $10 off the first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter the promo code LOCKEDONNFL. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com slash men, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L dot com slash men, and enter promo code LOCKEDONNFL. That's Nutrafol.com slash men, promo code LOCKEDONNFL. All right, everybody, thanks for making us your first listen, checking us out wherever you get your podcasts, uh, right here on Locked on Lions. Tomorrow on the show, yes, Sam Monson from Pro Football Focus, PFF.com. Sam is going to join us. He was in town for the joint practices with his buddy Steve Palazzolo from PFF. We'll get Sam's thoughts on what the Honolulu Blue and Silver Warriors looked like to him coming up tomorrow right here on this very program and we're going to try to sneak in a saturday post game pod i'm um, about 60 40 i will do that uh coming up on saturday after the lions and the jaguars all right i got this note from a uh, uh a colleague alex shapiro at betmichigan.com they decided to rank all 32 backup quarterbacks uh they go into aggregate ranking quarterback ranking from last year, touchdown percentage, interception percentage, and all of these things. Um, where do you think Teddy Bridgewater lies? Now, there's lists and names everywhere, all right, when you come to it. I've got the top, what, six, seven? I've got the top 10 backup quarterbacks right here, all right? Number one, Gardner Minshew of the Colts almost was named the starter last week. There was talk in Indy that Minshew Mania was going to be the starter and they were going to kind of wait on Anthony Richardson, but Richardson looked good against the Bills last week and he was named the starter this week. Still think the Colts are rushing him a bit. He's still a bit raw, but hey, uh, you got your guy Anthony Richardson and they're going to let him go. Minshew is ranked number one. Tied with the Eagles backup quarterback Marcus Mariota. Marcus Mariota I don't think is as good as the names I'm about to mention, but that's neither here nor there. Andy Dalton came in third. He's the backup in Carolina right now uh, behind Bryce Young. The Giants, Tyrod Taylor comes in at number four. And at number five, our very own Teddy Two Gloves, Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, Bridgewater is ranked as league's fifth most valuable backup based off of an aggregate consisting of experience, quarterback ranking, uh, TD percentage and interception percentage. So there you go. He is ahead of the Steelers, Mitchell Trubisky, the Saints, James Winston. I almost said Jameson. James Winston, uh, Washington backup, Jacob uh, Jacoby Brissett. What a good year last year in Cleveland. Brian Hoyer came in ninth. Brian Hoyer is still out there? My gosh. With the Raiders and Taylor Heineke in Atlanta. I'd take Taylor Heineke over Marcus Mariota, wouldn't you? I would take. Teddy Bridgewater over him. Marcus Mariota got booted out of Atlanta. Couldn't even hang with Desmond Ritter, who's not even that good. But Teddy Bridgewater coming in at number five tells you a little something about how the Lions felt about him. And I think this list at betmichigan.com is pretty cool. Um, and the Lions have had bad backup quarterbacks for years and have needed, you know, after we saw Nate Sudfeld, who uh, had a better day today, by the way, against the Jags, but uh, after we saw Sudfeld Friday night against the Giants, I think it kind of cemented <coughs> the notion that the Lions were in desperate need of a good backup quarterback. And they've got one, and they've got a top five backup quarterback in Teddy Bridgewater. So certainly an interesting list right there, uh, Bridgewater coming in at number five, which, again, I have no beef with. Look, the Lions 
season, I don't think will get derailed if something happens to Jared Goff. But Goff has played really, really well. And you look around the league and you see the amount of teams that need quarterbacks. I mean, look at the Tampa Bay Bucks right now. You got Mike Evans out here going, who's our starter? What is going on? You know, Mike Evans went from playing with Tom Brady to being on a team that needs serious help with Kyle Trask and Baker Mayfield. Look at the Niners right now. A lot of people are picking San Francisco to maybe represent the NFC in the Super Bowl. Who's our quarterback? Sounds like it's going to be Brock Purdy, Trey Lance. We had three straight three and outs the other day in the preseason. He just can't get, win the job. And Sam Darnold may be ahead of Trey Lance. If Sam Darnold is ahead of Trey Lance, then Trey Lance might as well just quit football. Right? But think about this. If the Niners said, can we wave our magic wand and get Jared Goff? Think about how good they'd be. Because they got a great roster outside of the quarterback position. So we're lucky to have Jared Goff here, and we're lucky to have Teddy Bridgewater here too. I think that's that's a fact. That's a uh that's a lock. But good to see Teddy on that list uh in a positive way. Um, you know, making the top five. All right. Uh, who looked good today down at uh in Allen Park at the joint practices with the Jaguars? We will discuss that coming up next, right here on this Thursday edition of Locked On Lions. Apologies, by the way, for yesterday's show. At the end of the show, there was some sort of technical difficulties and some internet stuff going on. So I do apologize for that. Thanks to those of you that pointed it out on my Twitter feed at Dairy Speaks. Are we calling it Twitter or are we calling it X? What are we calling it? I c- it should still be called Twitter. No one's calling it X. Come on now. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, here we go. Two guys stood out today. I got a couple of text messages on the inside today. I asked who who looked good. I could not make it down. I was going to go to practice today. I could not go. Um, the two Joshes had a big day for the Lions today. Josh Reynolds, who caught a 70-yard touchdown. And that's a name we never bring up, ever, is Josh Reynolds. Like, ever. Just solid. He caught a bomb today and ran away for a touchdown against the Jags D. That was a good sign. They need Josh Reynolds especially with J-Mo out and Amon Ra going to be out, you know, a week. Um, but Josh Reynolds had a big day. And the other Josh that had a big day today and continues to impress is Josh Pascal, who, of course, was drafted by Brad Holmes last year, started the season on the IR, came off IR immediately in the Dallas game in his first game, was splitting gaps, making tackles for losses. Josh Pascal has been really, really impressive. Training camp, preseason and these joint practices. And the question I think for the Lions is how, where do you slot him in? Where do you play Josh Pascal? You know, Lee McNeil's in there, Isaiah Bugs, uh, Covington. They've got, got some other guys on the interior. They've got so many hybrid defensive linemen. Like I think John Kaminsky can occasionally play D tackle. Uh, uh, Pascal is a guy that can play on the inside. The question is kind of where they're going to line them up and how they line them up. But Josh Pascal could really be a huge key to this defense and somebody that just is making plays each and every day in practice. Um, so it was nice to hear that he had a good day today. Also, like I said before, the defense <clears throat> yesterday got, I wouldn't say shredded by Calvin Ridley, but it was not a good day, especially against deep passes in seven on seven against Trevor Lawrence uh, and even on in some of the 11 on 11 stuff. Uh, but today, the Lions did a much better job uh, against the uh, defending the, uh, the the deep pass. Uh, uh, Chauncey Gardner Johnson had an interception today. There were a couple of other pass breakups today. This was not a day where Calvin Ridley, like yesterday, kind of ran wild on this Lions defense. The biggest key today was that there were no major injuries. You know, yesterday we talked about oh my gosh, J Mo left practice, St. Brown left practice. Uh, from all accounts. Um, there were no major injuries today. I will say this, and I'm going to talk to Sam Monson about this tomorrow. Uh, Lions backup defensive line is wide open, or excuse me, offensive line is wide open, especially at the tackle spot. You know, Matt Nelson's played there before. Jermaine Ifedi's been there, Bobby Hart. Um, and I said this the other day when we were talking about Julian O'Quara, it would not surprise me 
if the Lions had to make a roster move with Julian and traded him for some spare part offensive linemen. I mean, I know right now in New York, all they're talking about with the Jets is how bad the Jets O-line has been, the starters. Um, Lions backups, their second and third string O-line has not been good. And this has been consistent from the start of training camp. So we'll uh, keep an eye on that. All right, tomorrow, Sam Monson from Pro Football Focus is with us. This has been a Thursday edition of Locked On Lions. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen, checking us out wherever you get your podcasts, right here on the Locked On Podcast Network.